Hello everybody, welcome back to part 2 of our instructional videos about XVCAP. In this video we'll be looking at the program itself, what kind of controls and functions it has and what kind of preferences you can configure. Uh, since I haven't installed it in all the right places on this machine, I'll be uh, starting from the build tree itself. You can see I'm using GVidCap, so this is then the GTK based um, GUI, the known GUI so to speak. It has a uh, number, uh, it has a main file menu here, um, a button displaying the currently configured output file name along with the number of the current frame you are capturing. Then um, you see uh, three buttons which you will probably know from any uh, standard VCR. You can start to record, you can stop your recording session, or you can pause it and continue again later. The next three buttons are useful for uh, capturing to individual frames only. Um, they allow you to um, move backwards uh, with, in your, with your frames. Let's say you captured frames 1 to 50 and then you want to go back to 40 and um, continue recording from there, effectively throwing away um, frames 40 to 50, then you can just go back to frame 40 and continue recording from there, or perhaps you just want to overwrite uh, just frame 40, then you go back to frame 40, capture a single frame there, and then go back to where you uh, left off. Um, the next button allows you to attach or detach the selection frame, which is this red rectangular uh, thing over here. Uh, this uh, rectangle defines the area you want to capture. Uh, and as you can see, you move around the main uh, control panel, this uh, selection frame follows it around. Uh, it doesn't if you detach it, or it does again if you attach it. Let's uh, keep that detached. Okay, the next button allows you to select um, the area you want to capture. You can either click on a given window and select, uh, thereby select its body for capture. As you can see, XVidCap will um, not a select will not include the video decoration, the window decorations in, in that selection. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can click and drag um, to select any custom uh, area for capture. The next two buttons again are only useful for um, capturing to individual frames. Both start external programs. This one would call an external program which takes the frames you've, uh, you've kept it so far and turns them into an animated GIF. Uh, this one will start an external image manipulation program allowing you to edit um, the frame you captured last or a frame you moved to using these two buttons. So let's have a look at the file menu. There you can start uh, the preferences dialog. You can make it save and changes you make to the preferences of course. Uh, you can uh, start two more external programs, one to uh, um, take um, previously captured individual frames and code them to uh, through uh, to MPEG. A note that you don't really need this because you can just select um, a file extension of .mpeg which will do the job just as well. Uh, and then help basically um, opens the terminal window and displays the man page. Uh, and then, of course, you can also quit uh, the program here. Let's um, look at the preferences dialog. What you can do here is uh, select the number of frames per second. Um, you want to record, please be aware that not all video codecs here are e created equal. Uh, not all support uh, all arbitrarily chosen frame rates, so be sure to check man page to see which frame rate is actually valid for the video codec you want to use. And also note that this, of course, only applies to uh, on, on the fly encoding because if you're just capturing two individual frames, of course, uh, you can select any frame rate you want to use. Um, the next control allows you to specify the file name um, you want to use. Again, .mpeg enables on the fly encoding. And then you have two controls allowing you to set a number of frames you want to record or a number of time seconds you want to record. Uh, let's say uh, you put 500 in here, um, then any given um, recording session will stop as soon as those 500 frames have been recorded. If you put zero in here and here, this means 
uh, you always want to continue recording until you interactively stop your recording session by clicking on the, uh, the stop button. Image quality is a control much like controls of that name you know from image manipulation programs like when you want to save a JPEG image you will be asked what kind of image quality you want and this is exactly the same thing uh, used for capturing to individual JPEGs or PNG files but also used for uh, encoding to MPEG files. This compression uh, uh, setting is just used for uh, capturing to individual files and will um, uh, either set the compression level for JPEGs or uh, for gzip if you're uh, using files which don't, so which don't support native compression. Um, then you can select set your, um, encode, uh, your codec settings for on-the-fly encoding. Right now I'm using this for Windows Media Player compatibility. Um, note that this here does not mean that you can write shockwave files. This is just the FLV1 codec uh, which can be um, imported into shockwave files if you have the right tools. It's just in here uh, right now for experimental purposes because uh, at the moment I don't even know if this, this works because I don't have the right tools for Macromedia. Um, then most of the time you will want to use shared memory for performance reasons and you will often want to capture the mouse pointer. You can select between a black and a white mouse pointer. Um, uh, be sure to have a look at the FAQ or the man page to see what this is all about. Uh, but basically, this turns off mouse point capture or not. This then toggles um, all the capture on and off. Um, this is the device I'm capturing from. With the settings, note that although you can go up to five audio channels here, at the moment the only uh, really uh, useful values are one or two. Um, because at the moment you, uh, you only have MP2 audio codec um, for your audio stream. And also note that these settings here are uh, set for uh, small file sizes rather than audio quality. So if you are keen on audio quality, you probably want to up these numbers here and set this perhaps to stereo. Okay, let's encode something. Um, let's put something different here and say test MPEG. Uh, let's make this MPEG-4, let's disable this because uh, I am capturing right now and I just, uh, I'm starting a second capture session and I don't want to have this interfere with the first. So let's configure this, um, make OK, uh, start to capture, do something and stop. And then let's see what happened, M player, test MPEG, um, there you go. Well, this is basically it, folks. Uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, have a fun with XVCAP.